All right, we have a pretty weird, unexpected news story to talk about today. This one comes from Bloomberg. You may have noticed a lot of more recent smartphones, maybe the Pixel 8 line of phones, maybe the S24 line of phones from Samsung. These more recent phones are leaning heavily into AI features, things like text generation, summarization of text, even image editing, image generation, moving objects around in an image and having AI basically fill in the gap that was left behind. Really, really impressive, really cool stuff. Now, some of you may or may not know that on these Google Pixel devices and on these Samsung devices, Google is responsible. Samsung is literally licensing some of Google's tech for their features, namely Google's Gemini large language model. And as this becomes more and more true, and as these AI features become more and more baked into our phones and more and more popular, it only makes sense that the most popular phone maker in North America and maybe even the world in general, if I'm not mistaken, Apple, they need to get on board with this stuff as well. And that is going to happen, but in a way that some of us might find a little bit unexpected. Although maybe it's not that unexpected. I mean, think about it. What's the quickest, simplest, easiest way for Apple to suddenly catch up with where Google and Samsung are with these features? Well, it's to just license them from Google as well. We know that Google and Apple already have a little bit of a working relationship as Google does pay Apple like $18 billion per year to be the default search engine on iOS devices. And that is exactly what Bloomberg is reporting, that Apple is in talks with Google to license their Gemini technology, their AI stuff for an upcoming iPhone release as soon as this year, if I'm not mistaken, iOS 18 could be the one. Now, I do want to make it clear that they're not just talking with Google. Bloomberg reports that they're also talking with the likes of OpenAI and some others to try and figure out what their best way forward is for these AI features. In this video, I'm going to kind of talk about things from the perspective of Apple partnering with Google. I think that's the most likely outcome, and I think that it's probably the best outcome for all parties involved, but who knows, things could go another way. Now, of course, this comes hot on the heels of another report that Apple is indeed working on their own AI stuff. We'll talk about that a bit more throughout the course of this video. And some of the stuff is set to be coming as soon as iOS 18. So perhaps, you know, merging their own work with a lot of stuff from Google, and they're pretty much caught up. Now, obviously, one big difference between the deal that Google has with Apple to pay them $18 billion a year to be the default search engine, this deal should, in theory, run in the other direction, right? If Apple's going to be licensing Google's stuff here, they are likely to be doing the same thing that Samsung appears to be doing, which is paying Google for the right to use that stuff. As we know, Samsung is set to actually begin charging their users as soon as 2025, if I'm not mistaken, for the use of what they're calling Galaxy AI. And the most logical reason for this is because Google's probably charging them to use it as well. You got to keep in mind, a lot of this stuff runs in a data center that Google operates and running these data centers. Well, it's not cheap. In fact, it is extraordinarily expensive. And because of this, Samsung can't just use this stuff for free. Google cannot give it away. They would be losing money hand over fist. The expectation here is, at least for me, maybe I'm crazy, but I feel like Apple's probably going to have to pay for this stuff. Now, it is Apple, and they are absolutely gargantuan. And if they work out in this deal that it's made very clear that Google is powering these features, it's possible that Apple could get a little bit of a sweetheart deal on this. But that remains to be seen. Definitely very much speculation. Now, digging a little bit deeper, there are three different versions of Google's Gemini LLM. So there's Ultra, there's Pro, and there is Nano. If you're not familiar with these, if you've used the Gemini website or if you have used the Google Assistant replacement on your Android device, that is going to be likely Gemini Pro. If you're paying for Gemini Advanced, that is going to be powered by the Ultra version. And if you are using 
a Pixel 8 or an S24 device. Some of the on-device text summarization, like on the Pixel 8, summarizing something you've recorded in the voice recorder, that's done with Nano. Nano actually can run on the device. So one interesting aspect of this is when we talk about them licensing Gemini, we don't really know what they mean. Do they mean Pro? Do they mean Ultra? Do they mean on-device stuff like Nano? I could see them starting with the Nano stuff. And if they do that, it's likely that they could bring down what they're going to have to pay Google by quite a bit because it doesn't have to run in Google's data centers. It could just be running on the iPhone and it absolutely could run on the iPhone. We see that Nano is supposed to be running on some Dimensity chips, Tensor, Snapdragon, even Exynos set to have Gemini Nano. So of course, uh, Apple's processor for the iPhone would be more than capable of running this on device as well. It would simply just have to be maybe, I don't know, ported over to iOS. That probably isn't all that difficult. One last thing that it's not clear whether or not Apple is interested in is some of Google's image manipulation software, right? You've probably seen Magic Editor. You've probably seen Samsung's version of this, which is called Generative Edit. Stuff is really, really impressive. And I would think Apple would want to have their own version of this. And if they are opting to not build their own right now and use what Google has, it stands to reason that they may try and grab some of this stuff as well. Now, it's unclear. It's never been like properly announced exactly what technology is being used to power these features. 9to5 Google says it's Imagine 2, but I can't find anything that says that's absolutely true. Imagine 2 is often described as being text to image generation, so maybe it's Imagine 2, maybe that means it's not Imagine 2. It doesn't really matter. We know that it comes from Google. We know that generative edit on Samsung devices is powered by the same thing that powers Magic Editor. Just look at them running. You can tell that they're the same thing. They're doing the same thing. So might Apple want a piece of that as well? I think that that's entirely possible. Now with all of this, my expectation is they're going to be using Google's tech as a stopgap. I would imagine they're going to try and develop their own version of these things. And I've seen reports recently that state that they are in fact doing that, but it's not ready yet. And they're seeing the competition maybe run away a little bit with this stuff. So they're like, okay, let's use Google stuff for now. And then we're going to make our own stuff later. And we'll transition to that later on. But keep in mind, that's not necessarily easy, right? Apple can't just suddenly fire up data centers like Google has to run these things. And it wouldn't be running on one or two devices. It's going to be running on hundreds of millions of devices because there are so many iPhones out there in the world. So that's kind of, you know, logically why they're going the way they're going. It's really hard to just go from a dead stop to a start on something like this. So you're just going to use what Google has and go from there. All in all, this stuff is very, very interesting. I will drop a link in the description to the Bloomberg article. Keep in mind, Bloomberg, it is a paid article, so you're probably not going to be able to read it. Most of the stuff that's in there that's interesting, I hope I've talked about here, but if I've missed anything, drop that in the comments down below. And let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. Do you think it's interesting that Apple appears to be reportedly going in this direction? Sound off in those comments. Guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.